Folks will read Matthew 24, 36, where Jesus said, But about that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father alone. So how then can we know we're living in the last days? Stay tuned. Folks, I'm here with my friend Alan Parr of The Beat. Alan, so good you could join us here at uh, Prophetic Perspectives. Alan, of course, has this wonderful YouTube channel, and he gives five reasons why we're living in the last days. He's joined us, and Alan, could you give us those five reasons? Sure thing. Well, first of all, Nathan, it's great to be back again. It is and good uh, just uh, thankful for what God's been doing here through y'all's ministry. So super excited to, to hang out today and have a good discussion. So me too, me too. I think one of the main things here is that, you know, the Bible talks about in the last days that people are going to turn from Christianity to a lie, right? We can look at 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, where it talks about the Spirit expressly says that in latter times, some will depart from the faith and so on and so forth. So we see a lot of that happening in our culture now, where you see people are deconstructing or, or whatnot. And so obviously this isn't something that's just now happening now, but we seem to see a, pro a progression towards that. And so I think that's just one of the signs that we're living in the end times. Absolutely. Um, I think another one would be, um, you know, Christians settling down, settling for this watered down Christianity. Uh, once again, second Timothy, it says for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. And it talks about, you know, people gathering around people who, you know, want to have their ears being tickled and so on and so forth. And I think that now that we look at so many churches that are just kind of getting away from the Bible, not using the Bible much, the Bible seems to be coming under an attack more now than it ever has. Um, I think we just start to see that Christians, you know, a lot of people don't go to Sunday school. Many Christians are not biblically literate. And so we just see kind of this, this, um, movement away from sound theology to just like entertainment. And I think that's one of the things that we can look at as an end time, um, you know, one of the signs of the end times. But I think the third thing is a moral decay in our society. Oh, absolutely. I mean, man, worldwide, worldwide. World, worldwide, not just in here in the Western culture, but, you know, once again, Second Timothy chapter three, it talks about in the last days, you know, these things will come. Men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, bolsters, proud, blasphemous, so on and so forth. It gives Sounds us a long like laundry list, right? But yeah. when you look at our world today, you see people that are just, it's like our our society is just decaying. You know, you have this glorification of, you know, same-sex marriages and, and LGBTQ plus, I think I got all the letters and, and symbols <laughs> in there, agree. right? You know, and you see this moral decay that's kind of happening in our society more now than, uh, you know, it seems to be, for, for, uh, seems to have ever been in our history. So, it does, yeah. because men are calling evil good and good evil, and it seems to be celebrated. Yeah, exactly. And, and if you're not participating, then you're canceled. So. Yeah, or you're a hater, or you're a bigot, or you're a homophobe, or anything like that. And so, um, you know, like you said, it's, it's, it's not just that it's here, it's celebrated, and it's in your face, and it's almost forced upon you as yes. being, this is the new normal. And so I think that's definitely one of the reasons. Another reason that I think now moving out of Timothy is what Jesus talked about in Matthew chapter 24, whereas wars and uh, rumors of wars and basically the world being devoid of peace. Yeah. Um, you know, Jesus talked about, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not troubled for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And once again, we see a lot of this happening. Certainly in our day is not the only time there's ever been wars in our in our uh, the history of our world, but it seems to be kind of leveling up a bit more, particularly when you look at things that are happening in Africa and all these different uh, tribal wars and things like that. So I think that's one as well. But one that I'm probably, okay. that we see so much uh, nowadays more than ever probably is this increase in false prophets. Oh right? my word, that was Jesus' number one sign. Right? Absolutely, I mean, he says, hey, for false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive if possible, even the elect, right? And so we see so many people, everybody today wants to be a prophet. I mean, that's like the big thing, like everybody's giving a prophetic word and they wanna say, well, God told me this, or God told me that. And even people who are not trying to be prophets, you have a lot of Christians that always say, well, God showed me this in a dream, or God gave me this word for you, right? And you have all these many false prophets that are running around. In addition to all the, you know, the huge 
TV personalities of people that are always saying, God said this or God said that. And I just think that we're seeing an increase in that, which could be a sign that we are living in the end times. I was on Watchman Fellowship's website and they said there is 1,200 different religious organizations in the United States, 500 cults. 500 cults, I mean, big ones too, like Mormonism and Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah, wow. Well, Luke 21, Matthew 24, Mark 13, those are the good places to, to see. Jesus has 10 reasons, you covered five of them, and if you wanna see more, go to Alan's The Beat, we'll put that there underneath, and you can check out his uh, YouTube channel, thebeat.com. Remember what the Lord said in uh, 1 John 2, 28, and now little children, abide in him, that when he, Jesus, appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed about him at his coming. Folks, Jesus is coming soon. The signs of the end times are all over the place. He wants us to know he's coming back. And so you have to ask yourself, are you ready? How can someone be ready for the Lord to come back? Well, I think the first thing is that we have to uh, prepare ourselves. You know, the Bible talks about uh, the parable of the talents, right? And just making sure that we are using our gifts for the Lord and not just waiting around and just wasting time, but we have to make sure that we are preparing ourselves, living holy lives, but probably most importantly is being ready to give an answer for the hope that we have. We want people to be in heaven with us, right? We don't want them to miss out. And there's a lot of skeptics, there's a lot of unbelievers. So we have to make sure as Christians that we prepare ourselves to be able to always be ready to give an answer or a defense for the hope that we have, so. Excellent. Well, folks, we hope that you've accepted Jesus Christ as your savior, and you can be ready. If you do know him as savior, then tell somebody today. God bless.